Here we are back with Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin, and today we're in sunny Apalachicola, Florida. Well, welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin here at our Restoration Nation. We have come to the Gulf Coast to share with you one of our favorite homes that we've loved the longest. 20 years ago, almost, we stumbled into Apalachicola literally by accident. We got lost and found ourselves here, and then we found the house behind us, the beautiful, beautiful weefing house now when we first saw it it was for sale i won't tell you how much but it was for a pittance i will tell you that and it was falling down we were in no position to buy a house like this at that time and so someone else stepped in and saved this grand beauty and she is a lucky 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 lady a wonderful engineer and his wife bought the property and have spent the last 20 years returning her to her original splendor and we're going to take you on a tour inside today. Well I had to stand here to give you the history of the house because you were looking at etched glass from 1895 and if you understand antique glass its fragility the fragility of etched glass as a whole and then the fact that we are standing on the Apalachicola Bay you will know what a marvel it is that this is still present. So I had to stand here next to this beautiful floral display to tell you a little bit about the history of this home. This property was first purchased by Mr. McClay where he built a Greek Revival style home in the 18, late 1820s, early 1830s. For Mr. McClay, the property was purchased by Mr. Clark. Now, Mr. Clark had a plan. He was going to redo the Greek Revival home and turn it into a gorgeous Queen Anne masterpiece. It was the trend of the time, 1895, and he was gonna bring his new bride here to live in the beautiful home he was building for her. Tragically, Mr. Clark's bride refused his proposal and he never married. Not only did he never marry, he lost the house. And it was after he lost the house that the Weefing family purchased the property and they continued to expand the house. They completed the construction and then they did a 1902 expansion, all of which, all the details of which you can see inside the property. But this is an incredible home. It is a Queen Anne style home, but it is vernacular built and you'll see hints of that throughout the house as we go through it. So let's come inside and see one of the most beautiful restorations we've ever had the privilege of looking at and take a look at a Gulf Coast Queen Anne Victorian. Well, here we are inside the front hall of the Weefing House. Now, you'll notice all of this woodwork, which is original, cypress and pine covering the walls. This is a very, very common application that we see down here in the Florida Gulf Coast region and even along coastal regions um, up the East Coast, you see these wood walls. It's because this material is almost impervious to insects. It's always been a problem down here. Uh, plaster does not last very long in a high humidity environment. And as you can imagine, back when these homes were built at the turn of the 20th century, slightly before, there was no central heat and air. There was no climate control. So it made much more sense to do these wood clad walls than it did to do plaster. Now, this is what is so magnificent about this particular restoration. When the current owners bought this house, all of this beautiful woodwork was painted with several coats of paint and they meticulously and painstakingly removed every layer of paint to expose the gorgeous original wood details. And I have to point out to you some of my favorite details that they discovered in this wood. First of all are the door surrounds, the entablatures and architraves that we find in this house. These are a burl wood cut on all of these. You can see the beautiful pattern all around the door. If you were to buy this wood today to replace one of these pieces, you are looking at about $60 a linear foot for this particular cut of wood. Not only is it on all of the entablatures and architraves in this entire house, they even used it to clad the exterior. So that just shows you how 
plentiful the wood was here in the area when this home was built. The walls are of pine. Here in the wainscot, we have pine and cypress alternating to give us this wonderful striped effect. So the original newel posts, spindles, and handrail all were painted. They've all been meticulously, meticulously stripped. So beautiful restoration work from the moment we walk in the front door. We'd like to thank Factor for sponsoring this video and for the great food. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. I just have to say that this is the third of these meals that I've had and they've all been great. Not good, great. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes, which is perfect for busy lifestyles like ours. No, it's not yours, it's mine. It's mine. We hate the rubbery chicken that you get in a lot of places. This tastes like we cooked it out on the grill ourselves. It is tender and delicious. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code RESTORATION50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com. Use code RESTORATION50 and get 50% off your first Factor box in this wonderful, delicious food. Let's take a look at the front parlor. Well, here we are in the front parlor, what would have been the formal parlor. Now, remember that I told you that this house was originally a Greek Revival style home, and we still see just the barest hints of that in the house. Originally, once it was transitioned to a Queen Anne style home, it was still a center hall, four over four, design. So a very typical two pile center hall Greek revival floor plan that they then expanded and wrapped this Queen Anne facade around. But you can still see originally the floors were the same top and bottom four over four. On each side of the main hall we have these gorgeous box head windows. Now you know I'm a box head window fanatic. They're all throughout this house. That's because in Florida not only do you need center hall ventilation, you need cross ventilation. So we could have opened the walkout windows here. We could have opened them on the other side of the house and we would have had airflow going every direction in this house during the unbearably hot seasons that we have here on the Gulf Coast. You'll notice the archways. There are archways throughout the first floor. Absolutely stunning and even one upstairs. Take a look at the family parlor and the original mantelpiece that remains. Here we are in the informal parlor. This would have been the family's living space. You notice that, however, there are no doors that would have ever cut this space off. It is too hot all year to be closing rooms off if you can avoid it. So all of this would have been open for airflow. And I have to show you another piece of extraordinary etched glass. This one has a fleur-de-lis design and what appears to be Persephone, the goddess of spring, as the motif in the center. It's been here since 1895. So let's just all take a minute to appreciate its existence. Again, hurricanes are right there. We have the beautiful wainscoting in this room that alternates from pine to cypress. These walls are also the beautiful beadboard. Now the owner did decide to go ahead and repaint these walls as in the interior rooms, the solid wood walls get very, very dark, but all of the wood was stripped down to bare wood and then it was repainted. Take a look at this mantle. This was also painted. Now, those of you who've been with us for a while and you watch our other series, Restoring Our Victorian, you know that I tackled a mantle like this myself and it nearly killed me. I was talking to John, the owner, and he was talking about being here late at night with his work light on and his dental tools, picking the paint out of the back of the grooves. I told him I could not tell him how much I felt that and empathized with him and he has done an absolutely exquisite job restoring this beautiful mantle with its bevel glass, its English tile surround. Now these tiles, I almost guarantee you are not original, but they are period appropriate. And they look beautiful with the gorgeous hearth tiles, which are a deep blue. This house just keeps going. So let's take a look at the butler's pantry and the stunning kitchen.
magnificent kitchen, right? Absolutely beautifully done. Again, wood walls, like it's been here forever. But I wanna show you a couple things in these rooms that just set it apart, just make it absolutely spectacular. One of them is this little cast iron fireplace surround. You can see that it has high aesthetic movement design, just perfect for the period, mimics a lot of the aesthetic movement design that's in the uh, corner blocks around the door frames in some of the other rooms. But I don't know that this is original here. I'm not saying it's not original, I just don't know that it is because these are very, very commonly found in British and Irish homes of this period. This is a coal fireplace. It would always have been meant to burn coal. It's very diminutive. It's just a little decoration to go around a coal burner. So very possible that like the current owner of the home, this was imported from the UK. I want to show you something else imported from the UK. Come look at these tiles with me. These are absolutely stunning Majolica tiles made in Britain, but they were eventually exported to Uruguay. Britain never colonized that particular country. However, they did do a lot of development there. So they did a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the road building, a lot of the water maintenance, and they built a lot of homes. And when they did, they manufactured thousands of these tiles and tiled the entire home. The entire interior of the home would have been tiled in these tiles, floor to ceiling, every wall. Well, those homes are starting to become dilapidated and salvagers are going in, taking all the tiles out and selling them online. And so these tiles were made in Britain, went to Uruguay, and then made it right back here to Apalachicola, Florida for our current owner, who's from the UK to install in his kitchen. Now we're going to go back to the front door and take a look at the opposing side of the house. Well, here we are in the secondary parlor. Probably this would have been used because it has a door as a very private space, a gentleman's study perhaps, or a lady's sewing room, even a music room. But we do have a fireplace with its original hearth tiles and we have two bay windows. So this room is full of light. Now we have another gorgeous archway, but this is where I want to talk about some of the hints about the vernacular build of this home. And what do I mean when I say vernacular? I mean, we have just independent builders coming in. Most of the people who worked on and built this house were actually ship's carpenters. So they were building for strength, for longevity, not necessarily for aesthetics. So you see little things creep in that you would never see in an architect designed and craftsman created home, like this archway. Beautiful archway, exquisitely done. This whole home is done beautifully. But you'll notice this side of the arch has a full surround on the column. You've got your full return. This side, we sort of ran out of room and we only have a three quarter return. That is a little detail that shows us the vernacular build of this home. This is an original wall, an original fireplace. It was here from the beginning. They just sort of accidentally mismeasured by a tiny bit, got that arch a little bit off. And so you have this incomplete surround, which normally you wouldn't see in a super high style Queen Anne. Something else that was upstairs that we, that, that's no longer extant, but it's really fun, kind of shows you that vernacular build. There was a window in one of the bedrooms that looked out onto a brick fireplace. That was what was on the outside of the window from day one. That's how it was built. That's how it was constructed. So the window is no longer there, but the fireplace is. So little things that just show us that this home was being built by incredible, incredible craftsmen who weren't necessarily home builders. I love it.
another glorious dining room. This one has a couple of special features that I absolutely love. First of all, the mantles in the front, in the front parlor that you just saw, and in here, they're very, very light blonde. Upon first look, they look like maple. When I first saw them, I thought, oh, maple mantles. But if you look really closely, you can see that they're tiger oak, they're striped oak. So they have just been bleached over time to this beautiful honey color that I love. But I know all of you, all of you are gonna ask what the tiny hole is, what the tiny door is by the fireplace. I even opened it for you so you can see the inside. These are all coal burning fireplaces. Wood was passe by the time this house was built. A wood burning fireplace was considered dirty. You had to cut wood. That is for coal storage. So that would have been your coal storage space for your dining room, which indicates to me that this room was intended to see lots and lots of use because it's the only fireplace that we see that has built in coal storage. And then we have these incredible cubbies. Now, does this not look like something you would find inside a ship? It does to me. I can't say that definitively because I don't know anything about ship architecture whatsoever, but to me, this looks like a design detail that would have been present inside a ship um, in order to keep things tight and secure and stored. I also love these arches. We Again, we're seeing a lot of that neoclassical design that probably would have been present in the earlier build still here in this house as it is in its 1895 and 1902 form. So let's take a look at some of the other spaces down here and then we'll go upstairs. Well, here we are in the study. Now, again, I wanna remind you, when the current owner bought this house, all of the wood was painted, all of it. Every bit of the wood that you see in this room was painted. He thought these huge panels were probably plywood because what else could they possibly be until he got his sander out and started stripping them. And when he stripped them, he realized these are in fact cypress. These are single panel cypress boards. They're an inch thick. I want you to see how wide this is. We're nearly at 36 inches on this one board, which means it probably was a five foot tree that got cut down to this width and they line the room. It's absolutely stunning and something that we could never have today. And the light fixtures. Please look at the light fixtures in sconces. The current owner believes these are probably from the 1902 update. And I have to say, I agree. We have some early Egyptian revival movement happening around 1900, 1902, 1905. And these have that feel, that early, early Egyptian revival feel. So probably from 1902 and they've been here since that time. These are the amazing things that happen. These are the amazing things that can still be present when a home has only had three owners over its lifetime.
Look what we have. This is the one time I'm gonna let you call it this because this is the one time it really is a widow's walk. It's really a widow's walk. We have the ship's ladder, original, it's been here from the beginning, that goes up to the hatch and out onto the widow's walk. So that the lady of the house, whomever she might have been, could have looked out into the bay to see if the boats were coming in, the boats were going out. It's a real widow's walk. Let's go take a look. Well, here we are in the main bedroom, looking out over the beautiful Apalachicola Bay, right off of the balcony, off the front of the house. But there is such a treat hiding in this wall. Are you ready? Look at this door. Now, you're gonna look at this door and think, oh look, someone recently painted the door. It's charming. It is charming, but it is also probably close to 200 years old. So this door was found in a salvage yard in Pensacola, Florida, and it had about 15 coats of paint on it. When the current owners of this home brought the door home, they started to strip away the coats of paint and underneath was this. Now this is milk paint. And I don't know if you've ever worked with strippers, chemical strippers, or even heat strippers. Milk paint refuses to be removed. It is almost impossible unless you dip strip into a tub to be removed from a wood surface. This is all milk paint, which dates this darling. You are welcome to our home with the rose, a carnation perhaps, some floral scenes to probably 1820. So this is an early, early vernacular front door that someone would have painted in these vibrant, beautiful hues and milk paint to welcome people into their home. And that is gonna stay right here which now goes into the main bathroom. There's one little treat in here I wanna show you, come inside. Here I am inside the turret. Well, almost inside. Now I'm inside the turret. At the hexagonal turret. It makes a statement both from the exterior and the interior. I love this. Now, this is great. It has a crazy slope. The turret has a crazy, crazy slope, probably a two inch incline. And when the current owners bought the house, he was so worried about the turret stability. He came in, he's an engineer. So he came in, he tried to figure out how to stabilize the turret. He was very concerned. And then he met a very elderly, elderly woman. He was doing Meals on Wheels at the time. And he said he, she didn't talk to him for the first several months he brought her meals. But eventually she found out that he was redoing the Weefing House. And she said, my dad built those cabinets in that turret in 1951. And I want you to see this. These have not been changed. They've not been altered. Look at these doors not even a fraction of a hair off. So all of the drooping that he was so worried about initially with this turret had been this way at least since 1951. There was no danger of this turret going anywhere. But look at how fantastic this built-in is. Just gorgeous with a built-in vanity. What better use 
for a turret in an upstairs bath. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside the Weefing House here in beautiful Apalachicola, Florida. It's one of our favorite 
cities in Florida, and we know you would love it too. Now remember, we are not real estate agents. We are not trying to sell you this house. We don't represent or guarantee this house in any way. We make nothing from the sale of this home. If you want to discuss any of those things, you need to click the Zillow link in the description below. That will take you right to the very helpful real estate agent who will tell you everything you need to know about purchasing what is in fact an absolute dream home. But I have to tell you, it is very rare that we walk into a home and there is nothing that we would change. That it has been done to the highest caliber. Every detail has been attended to. This home is one of those few. It is absolute perfection in every way. And it's looking for a new caretaker. Its current owners want to move closer to their grandbabies. So maybe you are ready to take on this beauty by the bay. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for joining us today on Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin, and we'll see you next time right here. Give us a like, a thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button. Bye.